think of uh, Mr. George Hill's intention to run for president? Uh, I think that I will not, if, you, if, you, if I can have indulgence, I don't think I want to pronounce on the merits of any candidate uh, because no one is really... I prefer to wait until the confirmed list of candidates is out because uh, some have announced and confirmed the candidacy or the intention to stand. Some have indicated that they may. So I think it's better for me that... Uh, I see the entire state of candidates and I'll be happy to give you my view when that time comes. What about your position uh, as far as the, are you intending to contact? No, I can, I can tell you categorically that I am not uh, a candidate uh, for the elected president. So that should, that answers your question clearly. Uh, what about some of the views that the uh, candidates have been expressing so far about the elected president? What's your take? Uh, you know, as Minister for Law, in the early 1980s, I was very much involved in the drafting of the two white papers and the constitutional amendments which brought about the elected president. In fact, I'm thinking of writing one of my next books about the making of the elected presidency. So with that background, having been so closely involved, I must say... I'm a bit uh, surprised and disappointed over some of the statements and claims made by uh, some of the would-be candidates about what they intend to do if they get elected. Some of their statements seem to imply that the president is a center of power unto himself distinct from the government of the day and implies that he has certain executive powers. That is not the case. The president does have some discretionary custodial powers uh, in a few areas, mainly the protection of reserves on key appointments and he, he also has some custodial powers in ISA detentions, CPIB investigations, and the restraining orders under the Maintenance of a Religious Harmony Act. But even in those few areas, the President has no power to initiate decisions or policy. He only has a blocking powers. Other than those specified areas, in all other areas, the President under the Constitution, must act on the advice of the Cabinet. That is a clear legal position. So I think it is good if all Singaporeans, especially uh, candidates, are very clear about what exactly the role of the President is, what he can do, what he cannot do. I say that because I do worry, I do worry that otherwise there may be wrong expectations about uh, the role of the president and we should avoid that. That's all I want to say. All right. um, you said that you were surprised and, and disappointed by the comments made by some yeah. would-be candidates. Yeah. Can you tell us no, which I, comments? No, I, I, I don't want to elaborate. You know. uh, uh, Prof, will you endorse Mr. To Dr. Tony Tan if he's one of those? That goes back to my previous question. <laughs> that I, I would not like to speculate let me see the full list of confirmed candidates, then I'll be happy to give you my view. I think it's premature. But why have you decided not to contest? It's a personal decision, and uh, that's it. So Your future plans? Existence? My future plans, uh, actually, on stepping down from the cabinet, I revert back to the university where I've been on leave for some 30 plus years. Uh, and I'm on, I'm on the staff till 2013 on contract. I have uh, asked the university, and they've kindly agreed that I take uh, no pay leave for about five months so that I can sort out what I want to do uh, for the future. Uh, I don't want to rush into anything. Uh, and they've kindly given me some 
uh, office and secretarial space, secretarial facilities uh, in my old Bukitima haunt. So that's very kind of them. So I don't intend to rush into anything, but the elected presidency is not one of the things I'm going to do. Would you like to go back to teach again? Uh, let's see what happens. Yeah? Writing it, how, how do you feel? Is there something that, uh, that you feel that you need to add more? You know, foreign affairs is a never-ending story. And I could only write about episodes which uh, I was involved in. Therefore, I could speak from personal experience and give it a personal touch. But there are many other stories which I hope uh, either the permanent secretaries uh, or other ministers will write, uh, both before my time as well as uh, in Georgia's time. I'm sure George has got a big uh, reservoir of experiences. And I hope uh, it's not just foreign ministry. I think every ministry uh, has its own uh, uh, stories to tell. And I think it's a pity if they're not told, they're buried in archives. It's good for institutional memory and it's good for Singaporeans to know. Uh, what are some of the factors that underpin some of our policies, including foreign policy? Any other questions in the book? In your long distinguished career and both for affairs and both for departments, which, um, which event do you, does it stand up for you as the most meaningful and the one that you feel is most important for young people to know? Oh, there's several battles of questions there. Well, the most, shall I say, satisfying and challenging experience for me in foreign affairs was clearly the Pedra Branca issue. Why? Because it lasted for uh, three decades and I got involved in it when I was in the university even before I got involved in politics. So I had to see through uh, over a period of 30 years finally ending with the judgment in the International Court of Justice. So it's satisfying for many reasons, my personal involvement, my interest in international law, and I think uh, also because it was a very good example of how countries could settle their dispute in a civilized way uh, without it being a thorn or irritant derailing the overall bilateral relation. I thought it was a very good example Malaysia and Singapore set. Been writing the book? Oh, several years because it, it began originally as a, as a writing project and whenever I had time I, I had to write the chapter then there's a lot of research and checking of dates and facts uh, so I think the first episode was probably written about uh, more than two years ago then I kept adding and adding uh, until it took shape. Mm -hmm. What is the danger if younger officials and officers do not, are not aware of the sensitivities of foreign affairs? I think, I think MFA officers pretty soon uh, get to know what foreign policy is about. It's about national interest. But the pursuit, pursuit of national interest uh, has to take into account the cultivation of your relationships with other countries. And other countries are also pursuing their national interests. So how do you strike up a mutually beneficial cooperative relationship with as many countries as possible, make as many friends as possible, be as relevant and helpful, and be seen to be relevant and helpful to as many? While recognizing that from time to time, there will be problems, there will be hiccups, a uh, little crisis here and there, and how to manage those uh, uh, problems in a way that does not uh, jeopardize the entire uh, relationship. Keep in mind, the overall relationship doesn't get derailed. Yes?